Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to share with you six tips to get the absolute very best results from your DJI Spark. Now a lot of these topics I have covered at length in other videos, so I'll put a link up here when there's a relevant video so you can check that out if you want more detail. But anyhow, these are the same techniques I use every single time I fly. So yeah, let's get going. This first tip is one that I feel is really quite underrated, but it can have a big impact on the look of your shots. Now, anytime I'm out capturing video with my Spark, I always have my grid lines turned on. And grid lines are just a simple tool but they help remind me to be mindful of composition. When I'm shooting, I am thoughtfully composing my frame, putting my subject or objects of interest along those grid lines, and especially at those intersecting points. Now, it's a really simple technique to try, but it is going to make a difference to the look of your shots right away. Every shot doesn't have to be way up in the sky, camera pointed down, typical drone shot. It's cliche and boring. When you're out there shooting, grab a variety of shots. Get in close to capture some detail. Get down low and skim the ground or skim the water for a different perspective, or just let the drone hover in place and let the motion unfold around it. A variety of camera angles and positions will be much more interesting and immersive for the viewer and there's really no limit to it. So use your imagination, get out there and have some fun. Aerial drone shots have this almost magical quality about them, but when the movement is too rapid, unintentional or sudden, well, the illusion is broken and the magic is lost. The Spark only has a two axis mechanical gimbal, so we need to be extra careful to get smooth shots. Now I use a remote for very precise control and my movement while shooting is always very slow and very intentional. For more complex maneuvers, I will turn on tripod mode which dampens the responsiveness of the joysticks. This allows me to move a bit more freely knowing that the software is gonna prevent me from making erratic movements. And finally, when editing, I never use shots with any jerky, sudden movement. I mean, they just look terrible, so those ones end up in the trash. When you're starting out, flying in auto exposure and auto white balance is a great way to capture decent footage without having to worry about additional and possibly confusing camera settings. But if you want the very best looking footage, you need to get beyond auto and set manual exposure and manual white balance. Leaving things on auto means you're leaving exposure decisions and color decisions up to the software, and trust me, it's not perfect. It also means that exposure and color will constantly be fluctuating depending on what the camera is seeing. Setting exposure or white balance manually is not that difficult to do, and it's gonna instantly improve the quality of your footage. So get off auto and watch your stuff improve right away. The Spark only shoots full HD video at 30 frames per second. Now, one simple trick to smoother footage is to slow your clips down by 20% by editing on a 24 frames per second timeline. A 20% drop in speed has this really nice smoothing effect without making things look noticeably slower. And by only slowing the footage down to 80% of normal speed, the editing software doesn't have to create any filler frames, so the quality doesn't suffer. You're left with the smoothest, best looking footage with a minimal amount of effort. My final tip is a simple one. Fly, fly, and then fly some more. If you want to get better at capturing interesting footage and maneuvering your spark, you need to get out there and practice flying slow and controlled, setting exposure, and doing those complex maneuvers, well, they are all skills that need to be practiced in order to be perfected. So get out there, have some fun, and fly your Spark. I mean, really, isn't that what you bought it for in the first place? Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope that gave you some solid tips and ideas for capturing the very best footage from this amazing little drone. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and yeah, you guessed it. I will see you in the next one. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, so I don't need this. Oh, I need my spark.